morning. Um, <laughs> good morning. I had started filming a video about doing some at home uh, dyeing in the washing machine um, <laughs> that I wanted to put up this weekend. Um, but the dyeing has failed. It has failed. Um, it is not working. And I think. I think that I've figured out a way to make it work in the future, but I am without the necessary dyeing materials to do so, to make it work. Um, so while I'm waiting for those to come into the post and finish that video, I thought I would film a little like brief update of like my knitting projects that I've been doing this week, this past two weeks. How long has it been? I'm not sure, but I've not done loads of project, loads, <laughs> I was gonna say I've not done loads of progress, but I have, it's just that it's been on like one project, so it seems like kind of boring and like not that much to talk about, um, but I guess it's just a little, just a, little a little micro update, a little mini, mini episode, a little, little one. Um, so I've got a little tea, uh, grab your own little tea for this little episode um, and I've also got some uh, Halloween Percy Pigs which I might eat one of before I continue Ooh. or I might drop one on the floor <laughs> they come in different colours this is the lime one this is the not regular one and I'm chewing on camera it's like even more rude than chewing on the phone. I'm fast forward this bit. Yum. And Danny too. So, <laughs> something exciting that I can't find. Here it is. Something exciting that arrived in the post a few days ago um, was these little progress keepers, which you can see here. Um, there are three on here, there were five that came in the packet. They're from Love Crafts, Love, Loopy Crafts, Loopy Crafts. I got it on Etsy. focus, great. Um, and I've never had like lobster claw stitch markers before. I, I was gonna say shamefully, but I feel like actually this is really impressive. I have had the same five stitch markers since I was, I want to say like 14. So that's 11 years. <laughs> I've had the same five stitch markers that someone, like a friend through our church made for me when I was 14. And I have kept those and I have used those. I'm not a huge like stitch marker person. I tend to kind of be able to, well, I think I felt that it was like a point of pride to be able to like remember where the repeats were or like be able to read my knitting. Um, and I think actually like it was a really good tool for me to learn to be able to be like, okay, we're at like this increase or whatever. But now I'm like happy to use stitch markers. Um, the shawl that I'm working on at the moment, I have four stitch markers in to like show me where all the increases are. And it's great, I love it, I don't have to think about it. Um, but anyway, I've had the same five stitch markers and they've been the like, just the little, um, I don't have any to show you because they're all in use at the moment. Um, I'll show you my project, but they're all the like, just the round ones. But I've been seeing people with like progress keepers where they like are the lobster claw ones and you can like put them like where you start knitting for the day and then you can like see how much you've done, which did not appeal to me before but has suddenly really appealed for me really appealed to me so i've got some of those which is pretty exciting and all that to say that i can show you how much i knit on this sock project yesterday <laughs> because i used my new stitch marker um and also with my shawl project although i haven't really been working on my shawl project as much so i put the um excuse me, I put the progress keeper in it yesterday and I didn't work on it yesterday so the progress keeper is just at the most recent room so it's not that interesting but it means that in the future I'll be able to tell you exactly how much progress I've done between podcast episodes because I can like put these in so very excited about my new progress keepers. 
um, this project do, 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 is my sock project. It's my scrappy sock tube um, that I I think I maybe done like this much the last time that we spoke. It is now like so big. <laughs> it's so big. Let me show you. Um, oh, I've dropped the ball. I've dropped the ball of yarn on the uh, floor. Um, but so this is it all folded up. <laughs> this is it not folded up. Um, that's what I'd done before. And then I went on and I did a little more. And I did a little more, and now I'm here. Um, and I got to the end of the like scrap scrap ball that I'd wound up, and like I folded it in half, and I was like, these are too long for two pairs of socks, or for two. It's too long for two socks. It would have made two very long socks, too long. So I was like, oh, do I have to make three socks or four socks? And so I folded it in quarters and I was like, it's not quite long enough for four socks, but that's probably where we're going. So I pulled out some other scraps that I wasn't gonna use because it's like this pink one, I've just started adding. I wasn't gonna use it because it's like variegated and I kind of wanted to keep it like block colors, but actually I think it looks all right. It looks quite cool. Um, so I am essentially keeping going with this. I'm gonna keep going and I'm gonna make two pairs of socks out of it. Quite ambitious for my first ever sock tube. Um, <laughs> the yarn that I've dropped on the floor, I've got like this much left, so it's quite a lot. So I don't know if I'll use all of it because it might be a bit overwhelming. Um, but then I also have, what other scraps do I have? I've got this again, which is like a whole uh, I think this is like 25 grams so I don't know if I want to save this for like another project or just like put a little bit in here I'm wondering if I might use this as the cuffs toes and heels of like one pair of the socks and then use this as the cuff toes and heels for the other pair of socks because this is the colour that I've done that I started with that I did the cuff with to begin with so I might use that this for the pair of socks on that end and use this for the pair of socks on that end because it's kind of a pinky it's pink it's like a light pink uh jameson four ply that could be quite robust i think on smaller needles again these are not going to be the hardest wearing socks uh largely because there's like such a variety of yarn in there and some of it is uh yeah does like I mean, the majority of it like does not have any nylon, like it's not super washed. So uh, it's gonna be, I think, a pair of socks that might end up being patched a lot, but it's nice to produce something with all my scraps. Um, speaking of, this is the other scrap that I have, <laughs> very messy. Um, this is some blacker lioness in emerald um, that I used to make my ballerina wrap top and is now making its way into this sock. So I think, well, here's my little, see my little progress keeper. That's how much I did yesterday. This is kind of my like lecture knitting, my like TV knitting. I think I'm very like focused on it at the moment. I really want to get to the other end, largely because I want to free up these needles because they're my favorite sock needles. Um, So I want to whoosh, get to the other side of this sock. Um. That would feel good and also because I want to start the Into the Woods socks by Melody Hoffman and um, I've got this like yarn that is in the cupboard so I'm not gonna get it out but that is like kind of light and has like different speckled colours on it it's kind of like creamy and green and pink and I want to use that to make those socks but I'm not gonna let myself start until I've at least finished the tube. I don't have to have like made the socks, the pair of socks out of it because I feel like that's like a different type of project to like knitting it. That's more of a kind of like haberdashery project and takes a bit more time. So, but when I've cast off the other cuff on this, I will allow myself to begin those socks. So I've got a bit of a like reward waiting for myself at the end of these socks. Um, so yeah, I've been working, I would say pretty steadily. I mean like that's quite, quite a fair bit so expect to see these at least cast off the tube the next time that we chat um 
and hopefully I will have decided what colours I'm using for them. Uh, my hope is to be able to finish it with all the wool that I with wool that I already have and not have to buy like another mini or another like plain colour to do the toes and heels and stuff. Um because I genuinely am like this is the end of my sock yarn. Like I do not have any more. So we'll see. Hopefully that will be finished. I'll put that a sip of my tea. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, cheers, cheers. And, and then my other project. My other project that I am working on is the... I've forgotten what it's called. Shawl. What is it called? It begins with a B. The Berta Shawl. The Berta Shawl by... Um, I don't know actually the name of the designer, but I think it's with a specific yarn. I think it's a Barocco pattern. Let me know. Um, I'm about this far. I think I was about this far the last time that we spoke. I've put on a... Oh, see, here you go. You can see this is all the crew together. My These flower ones are my two uh, stitch markers that I've had for 11 years and this is my new progress keeper that you just saw so that will show me how far I'm getting on um, from today until the next time that we speak. Um, I have really taken a pause on this like I've not it was my lecture knitting for a while um, but now I think I'm just really feeling motivated on the sock tube so this has kind of fallen fallen away a little but I am really excited to finish it and to wear it and like loving the pattern loving the colours you can't really see as well like the holes in it on this background you can kind of see where the lace patterns are but I'm just really liking it but I've just not been working on it but that's my other project that's on the needles oh and I have a finished object I forgot I totally forgot. I've got a finished object. We're doing it all backwards today. I'm going to reach into my sock drawer, which is just here, and pull out a pair of socks <laughs> that I finished that I'd forgotten about. Um, I'm pretty sure I was working on these the last time that we chatted, and I had finished this one. I finished this one in my first ever podcast episode, so this was, this was an old guy, but it now has a friend. Proof that there's two socks. It now has a friend. I'm gonna see if I can focus on it. How's that? There you go. Oh, look at that. Look at those colours. I used uh, da, 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 a Rowan spun uh, colour. A Rowan spun yarn that I had for it. I got as a Christmas present ages ago for the main colour for the first sock, and then as one of the main colours for the second sock. So it's half that same Rowan spun Tweedy guy um, and half a kind of like sea green um, Jameson Fall Pie. Um, I always feel like I'm saying that wrong. Maybe you need to look that up about how, what it actually is. Um, and then the toes and heel and little cuff are in a blue that's also Jameson apply um I really like these they're very comfy they're great it's my own uh sock recipe um which is it's like a one by one I think it's a 64 stitcher it's one by one on a, a two millimeter and then just for a little bit and then it's three by one on a 2.25 millimeter um just your average short row heel. I did a German short row heel on, I think this one, but I think maybe not this one. <laughs> I'm not sure, I kind of made it up as I was going. Um, and then you kind of maintain the three by one rib on the top and keep it stuck in there at the bottom. And then I just did like, uh, I don't know what this is called. I call it like a flat toe, where you just do the decreases along the side. Um, I'm in focus again. Hello. I still have the socks. Um, yeah, I finished these. I forgot about them. I uh, was working on this one a lot during uh, my queer craft meeting on 
not the most recent one, but we had our first ever queer craft meeting of Edinburgh. Um, and then I finished it, I think relatively soon after. Again, it was like, I wanted to get to the end of it so that I could focus on my sock tube. So I think that's really working for me at the moment is uh, project monogamy and <laughs> finishing one thing before starting the other. Um, I'm trying to do the same thing with books at the moment. Um, I'm reading, where is my book? I'll be right back. I'm reading Knitting Yarns, uh, which is maybe a bit too on brand, um, but it's an anthology of different writers talking about kind of like their relationship to knitting and their experiences with knitting. Um, and it's edited by Anne Hood, uh, who wrote, I think, a novel about knitting. Potentially it's called like, oh, The Knitting Circle is the name of her knitting novel. And then she edited this. Um, and I'm really, it's the second time that I've read it. Um, I got it when it came out, which I think was 2014. So I read it then, I'm reading again now. Um, it's just really nice. It's a good cosy reading. And it also interestingly has a lot to say about like learning and failure and teaching people. There's a lot of like how to teach people how to knit and how that can often fail and why that can often fail and what it takes to kind of make it stick, uh, which is interesting for me in thinking about kind of teaching as my future career in a way that's like slightly softer and slightly more uh, gentle than a lot of the kind of uh, more intense like academic pedagogical reading that I've been doing. So this has just been a nice little break, but that doesn't completely kind of turn my mind off to the things that I'm supposed to be focusing on at the moment. But how it links to knitting, other than that it's about knitting, um, is that I'm trying to finish this one so that I can reward myself with this book, which is a YA book about, um, about like ghosts and lesbian love. I don't, I'll just read the back. I'll just re read the blurb at the back. Um, it's called After Love and it's by uh, Tanya Byrne. Uh, car headlights. The last thing Ash hears is the snapping of breaking glass as the windscreen hits her and shatters into a million pieces like stars. But she made it, she's still here. Or is she? This New Year's Eve, Ash gets an invitation from the afterlife she can't decline to join a clan of fierce girl reapers who take their souls of the, who take the souls of the city's dead to await their fate. But Ash can't forget her first love Poppy, and she will do anything to see her again, even if it means they only get a few more days together, dead or alive. <laughs> um, so this is my <laughs> reward reading. Um, but I, I thought about doing that like um, end of the year book tag uh, that Ariel Bissette has done, has made. Um, but the first question is, are there any books that you have started reading but you haven't finished? And the answer is yes. Yes, there are. There are maybe like 25, potentially more. Um, <laughs> so I thought, why don't I not spend my time filming that tag and instead spend my time finishing the books that I've started and giving myself, 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 my multiple selves, giving myself uh, a reward and motivation to do so. So this is in my future in the same way that the Into the Woods Socks by Melody Hoffman's in my future and also in my future. Oh, it's all very exciting, future plans. Um, <laughs> also in my future is um, The Seventh Street Shawl by Susan at Knit Nip, Knit Lip, Knit Lip. Um, I've only just discovered Susan and her podcast, Knit Lib the podcast, and I just love it. Like, I feel so attracted to the colours that she uses. Like, it's so many, like, neons and, like, bright colours. I'm just like, yes, this is great. Like, I'm definitely wanting to kind of bring more colour into my life. So, inspired by her, I have ordered some yarn from indie dye work 
Lux, what is it called? I'm going to look it up on my phone. Um, it is Indie Yarn Club. I've ordered some yarn from Indie Yarn Club, uh, which is a UK based dyer and does like very similar colours to, is like very kind of knit lib uh, colour palette. So I've ordered, you need two skeins to do the seventh street, blah, you need two skeins to do the seventh street shawl in like sock weight um, and so I've ordered one that's kind of like a light pink with flecks of like kind of neon pink and neon green or like neon yellow and then I've ordered one skein that is just neon yellow <laughs> which is like very outside of my current colour comfort zone but I'm like really excited and like I just want to be surrounded by colours that make me feel happy and excited so when they arrive I will be casting on. Will I be casting on? Maybe I, oh, I have to finish the shawl to do my next shawl. I have to finish the socks to do my next socks. I hadn't actually realised that I had almost precisely uh, replaced project for project with my aspirational knitting, but there you go. It's a socks and shawls kind of time. Um, and also I feel like moving into the winter months, it's nice to be consciously kind of bringing more colourful projects. Um, I think it was Amanda Soul who has the blog Soul Mama or had the blog Soul Mama. I think she doesn't post so much anymore. Uh but runs like Taproot magazine, which is still going, like is the editor in chief there. Um but she always had a rule about like when it came I think it was February was the month that she had this rule for, but where you could not have any like natural colours in <laughs> February. It had to be like colours only uh, to kind of detract from or like in a contrast to the landscape where she lived which was like often like covered in snow and just white and beautiful but I think February could be quite a dark month so it's nice to have something whew, colourful uh, so I guess I'm doing the same for September and I'm really excited to show you the yarn when it arrives um, it's gonna be so cool so yeah those are my projects, these are my books. I can hear my washing machine valiantly washing away. Um, I'm making my clothes ever so slightly yellow, ever so slightly, just a little bit. Um, so hopefully I've just ordered some more dye, so hopefully that more dye will come and then I can dye my clothes properly yellow and let you know how that all goes and show you the results of my first ever dyeing project um, the next time that we hang. Uh, I hope you've all had a good week and thank you for hanging with me in this like slightly chaotic uh, mini episode that's probably ended up being as long as my regular episodes have been very rambly but hey ho, it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, that's me. Have a good Saturday, or a good Sunday, or a good Monday, or whatever day it is when you're watching this. And subscribe if you'd like to see more, like the video, if you liked it. And leave a little comment saying hi and what you're up to this weekend, if you would, are so inclined. <laughs> um, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you when I see you. Bye!